into your online flow. Let's start in a seated position, Sukhasana if it's comfortable for you. Hands can be on the knees, palms down. Take a moment to close your eyes. Start to feel yourself grounding down through your base, through your sits bones. Notice your breath. And with an inhale, see if you can sit up a little taller, lengthening through the spine, crown of the head, reaching upward. With every exhale, try to soften your shoulders, let your body melt, feel yourself rooting. some time here just to find stillness, to calm the body, and to let the stillness in the body translate to the mind. If we have any thoughts maybe interrupting us in this space, see if on an inhale you can gather them all up. And on an exhale, let them drift off with your breath. Clear your mind. Let every inhale be that nourishing breath in. Every exhale, softening, finding comfort here in this pose. Connecting to your next exhale, draw in a long, deep breath through the nose. At the peak of the breath, parting your lips and releasing out through your mouth. Allow your right ear to drop down towards your right shoulder. And let your head be very heavy here. Open through the side of your neck. Breathe into this space. And on your next exhale, allow your chin to roll down towards your chest. Your breath coming up through the back of your body. After your next exhale, let your left ear drop down towards your left shoulder. Again, opening up now through the right side of your neck. After an exhale, roll your chin down towards your chest. Let your arms come alongside your body. With an inhale, sweep your arms high. Gaze towards your thumbs, palms can connect. Exhale, hands down through heart center. And with an inhale, again, sweep the arms high. Navel to spine, exhale, hands down. Inhale, reach, letting the sides of your body lengthen. And exhale, letting go. Next time we inhale, open the arms out towards the sides. Squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back body. Exhale, bring the palms in towards your chest, leaning back, chin can tuck in. Inhale, open the arms wide. Shoulder blades squeeze into one another. Exhale, palms connect, chin tucks in. Inhale again, sweep the arms all the way up overhead. Navel to spine. Exhale, elbows bend 90 degrees. 
Inhale, draw the elbows back. Again, opening and broadening across the collarbones. Exhale, forearms come together, pressing in towards your midline. Inhale, opening up. Exhale, connect forearms. Inhale, opening. Exhale, in towards center. Inhale, open. Exhale, point your fingers towards the front of the room or in front of you. And inhale, fingers up toward the ceiling. Exhale, fingers point in front. Inhale, upwards. One more time. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale, hold. Inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, elbows bend. Draw the elbows back. Inhale to lift. Sits bones root. Exhale, elbows bend. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, elbows down. Let's reach out through the fingertips. Cross your right elbow over top of your left. Hands can either come towards your shoulders. Maybe the back of your hands connect. Maybe your palms press into one another. So a variation of eagle arms. Pressing forearms and palms in towards your center line if we can. Sending the breath up through the back body and trying to breathe into the space between your shoulder blades. Last inhale, maybe you reach fingers toward the ceiling, and on an exhale, elbows can draw in a very gentle round through the back. Let's inhale, come right back up through to center. Inhale, arms open up, and exhale, crossing left arm over top of your right. Again, hands can come to the shoulders. Maybe back of the hands meet, or palms connect. Finding your center, breathing into the space. With your last breath here again, Inhale, maybe fingers reach, elbows lift. And exhale, elbows lower, gentle round through your back. With an inhale, lifting up to center, release your hands down. Breathing, bring the arms up overhead, connect the palms. Exhale, hands through heart center. Take a moment to press palms into one another and then just turn the fingers away from you and down. Again, continue to press towards the center line. Feeling this perhaps through your forearms. And then reaching the fingers up toward the ceiling. That slight push off towards one side. And then over to the other. back through to center, give the wrist a little shake, maybe some shoulder shrugs, releasing out. All right, rolling over the shins, coming into your tabletop. Let's find fingers spread wide, knees hip distance apart. Start by tucking the tailbone under, draw the navel toward your spine, look between the knees, chin tucking in. We round into our back. And on an inhale, start with the tailbone lifting and the vertebrae by vertebrae start to open up. Chest forward, gaze lifts. Exhale, start with the tailbone tucking under, navel to spine, push through the hands, chin tucks in. Inhale, find that lift, opening up. So we're finding our cat cows or flesh. 
flexion and extension through the spine. If any area feels good in your body, stay and hold. Send the breath in. Maybe you move at your own pace, faster or slower than I. The next time that you round into your back, let's add a tail leg. So just swaying the hips off to one side, looking over the shoulder, back through to center, and off to the other side. A couple of those each way. Coming back through to center, start tucking the toes under. Let's lift our knees an inch or two off the mat. Drawing the belly in, strong through the abdomen. Push back through the arms and start lifting the hips, straightening the legs out. So we've entered our first downward facing dog. Take the time here if you'd like to pedal through the legs at all. Lift one heel, drop down through the other. Moving with your breath at your own pace. Let's stay strong through the upper body. So really pressing down again through all finger pads. Pushing through the arms, trying to find this lift all the way up through the torso and out through the tailbone. Draw the abdomen in, so we lift our bellies, our abdomen off of our thighs. Connect to your breath, and on your inhale, let's keep the upper body exactly where it is, but lift the heels. On your exhale, drop the heels down. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale, let the heels descend. One more time. Inhale to lift. Feel the strength through the feet, through the toes. Exhale to release down. Inhale to lift the heels high. Let's roll forward toward a high plank position. Exhale to drop your knees here. Let your elbows tuck in and slowly lower down to your belly. On an inhale, press through the hands, baby cobra, head and shoulders lift. Exhale to release down. Inhale, find that lift. Exhale, release down. Inhale, if you'd like a little higher, full Bhujangasana or Cobra, lift up. And on our exhale, let's send it back to the child's pose. Hips toward the heels, forehead down to the mat. Let yourself connect to your breath. Tune into your body. Notice the heat generated through all of our movements so far. With your inhale, let's look toward the hands, lift to our tabletop. Tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Glancing towards the hands, let's walk or step the feet forward, coming to the top of our mat. On an inhale, lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Lift your gaze, really work on lengthening the spine, and exhale to release down. Inhale, sweep your arms all the way up, coming to standing, navel to spine. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, bowing over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, plant your hands, step back to your high plank position. Inhale, pushing off the toes so we shift forward. Exhale, lowering down, elbows tuck in, either down to your belly or chaturanga. On your inhale, an upward lift, cobra or upward facing dog. 
and exhale, find your downward facing dog. Bring a little bend to the knees, rolling onto the outer edge of your right foot. Left inner edge comes to the mat. Inhale, left arm reaches up toward the ceiling or toward the top of your mat. Nice long stretch through the side of your body. Reaching in on an exhale, let's bring that hand back down to the mat. Rolling onto the toes, bend into the knees. Shift over to the outer edge of your left foot, inner edge of your right foot. Inhale, sweeping your right arm high or reaching toward the top edge of your mat. On an exhale, bring your right hand down to the mat. Send the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Long breath out. Big inhale, lift the heels high. Shift forward, high plank. Exhale, lowering down. Inhale, upward lift. And exhale, downward facing dog. Let's sweep the right leg up into the air. Rolling the hip open and bending into that knee. The foot falls toward your left glute. Glance underneath your right armpit toward the upper ceiling behind you. Feel a long stretch through the side of your body. Arms still maintaining strength. And inhale, let's straighten that leg, square your hips. Look to your hands and exhale, drive that right knee forward. Let's step between the hands, drop the back left knee to your mat. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands lower down behind your back. Interlacing fingers, open up the shoulders and hold here. As we hold here, work on the leg. So that back foot can be pressing into the mat. Act as if you're dragging that left knee forward, tucking the tailbone under, navel to spine. We open up across the chest. Maybe you want to lift your gaze. Gently releasing the hands. Inhale, arms up. Curl the back toes under, exhale, lift your knees, sway your arms back, long diagonal lunge. Inhale, let's sweep the arms up, and exhale, hold here, high presses. Work on pulling the belly in, knitting the front hip bones down toward the front hips. Avoiding that really, really deep back bend, or lower back arch at this time. One more inhale, reach up through the arms. On an exhale, let's step forward into that right leg. Lift your left. Airplane arms, we come to our warrior three. Gaze toward the floor. Reach back through your heels. Toes point down toward the mat. Keep the hips square. Strong in that right leg. And on an inhale, lift the arms. See if that left leg can come all the way up and through. Knee towards the chest. Exhale, hands wrap around the front shin. And pull that left knee in. As you pull this left knee in, press down through your right foot. One more breath. Exhale, release that leg down. Take a moment, find your breath cycle. Now we move on to the other side. Let's inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, diving over the legs. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, plant your hands, step back, high plank. Inhale, shift forward, exhale, lowering down, navel to spine. Inhale, upward lift. And exhale, downward facing dog. This 
time, inhale the left leg high, roll the hip open, bend into the knee, foot falls toward the right glute. Take your gaze under your left armpit toward the upper ceiling behind you. Pushing through the arms, still pulling the belly in, we're long through the spine. Let your right heel descend toward the mat. Your next inhale, straighten the legs, square your hips, look toward your hands and exhale, drive the knee forward, planting the foot between your hands. Back knee drops to the mat, inhale, arms sweep high. On your exhale, arms lower, interlace hands behind your low back. Open up through the chest, squeezing shoulder blades in toward one another. And then again, let's press down through that back right foot. Try to drag that right knee forward, tucking the tailbone, pulling the belly in. Maybe your option to lift your gaze. Sweep the arms up. Press away from that front foot. High crescent. Navel in, low ribs. Again, pull in toward the front hip bones. Press back through your right heel. Your next inhale, extra reach through the hands. Exhale, step forward, lifting your right leg off of the mat. Warrior three. Back toes point toward the floor, reach out through the heel. We want to be a long line from the heel, through the body, through to the crown of the head. Active in the arms, active fingers. And as you inhale, let's sweep the arms up. Lift up through the body, right knee driving in. And exhale, hands lower, wrapping around that right shin. Squeeze the knee in close. Root through that left foot. And gently releasing that leg down. Full inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, sitting into your chair pose. Feel the weight move back into your heels. The tailbone slightly tucking under, belly in. Let's bring the hands down to heart center, coming into a twist. On an exhale, twist to the right. Maybe the outside edge of your elbow connects to the outside of your right knee. Drop down through your hips. And with an inhale, maybe you want to open the arms. Lift the gaze toward the ceiling. If the arms are wide, exhale, bring the palms into one another. Inhale to center. Exhale, twist to the left. Again, maybe the elbow can connect to the outer left knee. Press palms into one another, try to open the chest. That option with an inhale, open the arms. Maybe the gaze moves toward the ceiling. One more inhale, and an exhale, palms reconnect. Inhale all the way up through to center, and exhale, hands release down behind your low back. Interlace, open up through the chest. Here we'll bend the knees once again. Start leading forward to the heart. Abdomen rests on the thighs completely, dropping your head heavy, chin tucks in. Hands naturally move away from the low back, reaching toward the ceiling, maybe falling in front of you. Let yourself release here. 
Try to let go in the shoulders and the neck. Feel your neck grow longer. One more breath. On an exhale, releasing your hands down to the low back, then to the floor. Let's straighten the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step or hop back. High plank. Moving through your chaturanga as you exhale. Upward lift as you inhale. And exhale, downward facing dog. Few breaths here. Sweep the left leg up over toward the ceiling. Look toward your hands. Exhale, step through. Inhale, high crescent. Exhale, hands to the low back. Inhale, lift the chest, open the heart, gaze toward the ceiling. And then exhale, releasing. Hands drive forward. Step onto that front foot, lifting your right leg up. When you're ready, slowly begin to lift all the way to standing, right leg, coming forward, up and through. One more inhale, and exhale down, hands through heart center. Inhale, arms reach, exhale, melting over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step or hop back, high plank, chaturanga. Inhale to rise, and exhale, downward facing dog. Big inhale, sweep the right leg high. Look towards your hands, exhale, step through. Inhale, high crescent. Exhale, hands behind the low back. Clasp and interlace, open the chest. Inhale, looking up. On your exhale, release. Arms sweep forward. We lift the back leg. Warrior three. Keeping that back leg straight on an inhale. Let that leg swing forward and through. One more breath. And exhale, arms down. Inhale, draw sweeping the arms high. And exhale, hands through heart center. Open the palms toward the front of the room. Dropping the chin. Close your eyes. And breathe. Take a moment, dropping the right ear down toward the right shoulder. Rolling your chin toward your chest. And your left ear over toward your left shoulder. Rolling your chin down towards your chest, 
Big inhale, sweeping your arms high. And on your exhale, bowing over the legs. Inhale, lift halfway. And exhale, plant your hands, step or hop back. Exhale to lower. Inhale to rise, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Big sweep of the right leg, up and back. Look toward your hands and step that foot through. Ground your left heel down to the mat. Inhale, arms sweep up. And on your exhale, release hands down to the low back. Interlace hands, open up through the chest, lift your gaze. Option to stay here, or on an exhale, lead with your heart, folding towards the inside of that right knee. Dropping your head heavy, hands fall forward our humble warrior. Your next inhale, lift up, pressing away from that right foot. We'll release the hands, windmill that left arm back, right arm forward, warrior two. Sink into that front knee. Smear the back toes toward the back of the room. Flip that front palm, inhale, exalted warrior. On your exhale, come forward. Can we bend into that front knee, dropping our hand down to the mat or perhaps onto a block? Glance toward your hand, reaching toward the ceiling. Maybe that left arm can reach toward the top edge of your mat. Bicep rolling in. And with an exhale, take your gaze down. Left hand can root to the floor. And we'll roll onto the back toes. We're coming into our lizard pose, so you can release that knee down to the mat if you'd like. Maybe the chest stays open, palms rooting. Perhaps we drop down toward our elbows or forearms. They can also be on a block for that midway point. For this one, let's try to keep that right knee in towards the right shoulder. Maybe they can press into one another. One more breath as you are. And then let's press up onto the hands. Slowly begin to curl your back toes under. And we'll walk our hands over to the left side of our mat. Straightening the right leg, toes point to the side. Lunge over towards that left leg. Right toes can stay pointing forward. If it helps, reach them toward the ceiling. Hands can become light on your fingertips or press the hands, palms in toward heart center. Breathing here. Feel free to stay and hold this. Maybe you want to drop the left shoulder toward the inside of your left knee. You can reach that left arm out, an option to stay here like this. Option to sweep your right arm toward the ceiling and open up through the chest. If you're comfortable with the bind, turning both palms behind you, bending at the elbows and finding that collapse of the hands. Keep drawing that right shoulder back. Keep opening the chest toward the ceiling. Keep drawing in deep inhales. Let's inhale, release the arms. We'll all meet, hands can root toward the floor. Inhale to center and exhale over to the top edge of your mat, turning hands and toes to face the top. Let's step back to our high plank, bringing in that shift forward, exhale to lower. 
Inhale, find your upward lift. A bit of buoyancy through the front body. Exhale, downward facing dog. Find your breath, belly pulling in, pushing through the arm. Inhale, sweep the left leg up, look towards your hands, exhale, step forward and through. Inhale, high crescent, exhale, warrior three, shift forward. Inhale, arms sweep up, swing that right leg through. Exhale, can we bring the outer edge of that ankle onto our left thigh, sitting in to our pose, so half chair. Belly in, palms pressing to one another. Gaze softened on one drishti point. When you're ready, inhale, standing tall. Drop your right foot down. Exhale, hands through heart center. And inhale, arms rise. Exhale, melting over the legs. Inhale, lift halfway. And exhale, plant your hands, step or hop back. Inhale, upward left. And exhale, downward facing dog. For the other side here, let's inhale the left leg up. Look towards the hands, exhale, stepping through. Let's drop the right heel down, turning the toes slightly out. Inhale, arms come up. And exhale, hands release behind your back. Interlace fingers, open the heart, the chest toward the ceiling. And option on your exhale, melting forward. Dropping the chest, letting the head go, hands fall forward. Our humble warrior. Taking this to our dancing warriors, we inhale, pressing away from the front foot. Release your hands, exhale. Inhale, arms up, warrior two. Really find yourself tucking the tailbone under, reducing any lower back arch. Flip the front palm, inhale, exalted warrior. Find that strong back leg, right hand rests on it. Exhale, let's come forward and our left hand drop down to a block or to the floor. Right arm reaching high, maybe towards the top of our mat. Long line from the heel out through the fingertips. Try to pull the belly in, hips slightly forward. On an exhale, take your gaze down, right hand can release down to the mat. Turn onto your back toes and set up for your lizard. Again, option to drop that back knee down to the mat. Hands stay on the inside. And again, can you keep that left knee pressing into the shoulder and maybe that shoulder gently pressing into that knee. Try to keep the spine as long as you can. Don't force yourself to go lower if it starts to really compensate and make you round through the back. Let this be a deep hip opening, the hamstring through your right psoas. Your last breath in the pose or variation that you're in. And then gently come up onto the hands. We'll all start to bring our hands over to the right side edge of our mat, curling the back toes under. 
turning the left toes to the side edge and lunging into that right knee. So that left foot, toes can point forward or up toward the ceiling. Try to drop down through the hips, letting this right heel lower if it can. Fingertips light on the floor, maybe hands can lift. Option to stay here or start trying to drop that right shoulder in toward the right inner knee. Right arm can extend. Maybe we lift that left arm. Again, stay here if you're working on binds. Turn the palms behind you. Bending at the elbows. Can the hands clasp? Can you grab perhaps one of your wrists? Drawing and opening that left shoulder. Gazing toward the ceiling. One more breath. And releasing the arms. Bring them back down to the mat. Inhale to center, and exhale over to the top of your mat, turning toes to face the top. Let's step back to our high plank, shifting forward, exhale to lower, inhale to rise, and exhale, downward facing dog. Full breath in here, and a long breath out. Let's inhale, lift the right leg high. And exhale, step between your hands. Inhale, high crescent. And exhale, warrior three, shifting forward, lift your left leg. Your next inhale, sweep the arms high, let that left leg come up and through. Can we bend that right leg, letting the outside edge of that left ankle rest on our side, hands to heart center, half chair. Use your exhales, trying to sink the hips even further. Maybe leaning the torso slightly forward. And then slowly begin to release standing tall. Arms sweep high. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, plant your hands, step, float, hop back. Inhale to your chaturanga, or upward lift rather, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Take a moment here. If you'd like a wide leg frog pose, let your knees drop down, mat distance apart. Maybe knees stay together and we'll sink the hips back, releasing to the mat. Let yourself soften here. Inhale, let's look toward the hands, drawing up onto the forearms. Knees can come in if they were wide. Start to tuck the toes under, and elbows stay shoulder distance apart. Palms can either root into the floor, or they can stay clasped toward one another. We'll find our dolphin pose. So lifting the hips high, up and back, pushing through the elbows or forearms. You can walk your feet in if you'd like. Always a bend in the knees or heels lifted is welcome. Really feel that deeper opening, perhaps through the shoulders. If you would 
would like to lift one leg toward the ceiling, slight shift of your weight, explore how this feels. And then dropping that foot back down, switch sides. You can lift the other leg up. And releasing down. Knees can drop to the mat. Sitting onto the heels, shoulders stack over the hips. Inhale, inhale, arms rise. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, arms lift. And exhale, hands lower. From here, we'll bring our hands back behind us. Fingertips into the floor. If you have blocks or books at home and the hands don't want to reach the floor, by all means, blocks can come behind. We press our hands down trying to get an opening through the thighs and the front of our body. Taking this a little deeper, a little further, feel free to lift the hips. Work on tucking the tailbone under, almost scooping it forward, and then opening the sternum toward the ceiling. You can keep the chin tucked in. You can also send your head back, opening through the throat, Gently begin to release down and feel free again to come into your child's pose. Breath expanding into the back of your body. Slowly begin to rise up. Feet can kick off to the side, bringing the feet forward out in front. Hands can come behind, fingers pointing towards your feet. Feel free to walk them back and bring a bend into the elbows. Elbows try not to flare out to the sides, but rather point back toward the wall or the back of your mat. And with this, we can also add in that gentle sway of the knees side to side. Gently pressing forward. Let's extend the legs out in front of forward fold or Paschimottanasana. Pull the toes back towards you. Bend in the knees is all right. Sit bones root heavily into the mat, evenly distributing your weight. Let's inhale, draw the arms up. As you exhale, fold forward. I like to keep the gaze lifted to begin with so my spine stays long. Hands find a place to rest either along the floor, legs, maybe the toes. And then feel free to gently tuck the chin in, maintaining long in the torso. Something to think about is as you pull the toes back towards you, almost try to push through your big toe mounts and pull the outer edges of your feet back towards you. Often that deepens the stretch that you feel through the back of the legs, so be aware of that, or ready for it at least. Find an inhale, try to lift up halfway or so. Long, open body. 
And on your exhale, releasing down. The exhales assisting you in the pose, using them as that opportunity to always let go, to release a little further, to soften or find comfort. When you're ready, walk the hands back, lifting up. We'll widen the legs off to the sides. Pull the toes back so that they point up towards the ceiling. Bit of an opening for the inner thighs. And we'll take this into our side bend. So the right arm can extend down your right leg. Left arm sweeps up. And on an exhale, let's bend, melting toward that leg. With an inhale, feel free to roll your chest and your gaze toward the ceiling, pulling this upper left shoulder slightly back. Really breathe through the side of your body, reaching further out through the fingertips. If your left sit bone almost lifts off the mat, maybe you press that right heel toward the floor. On an exhale, let's roll our chest down towards that right leg. Hands can release a little reach on either side of your foot. And then let's inhale, press down through the hands, walk them over to center. And center here, take a moment and exhale, you can release down. Again, as far as you'd like, but keep the toes trying to point up. Try to keep that long spine and that smooth breath. Never force yourself into a pose. It will never take you further. It's really the breath. Can we find that full expansive breath? Can we feel the peak of the breath? And then can we soften? Does that allow us to melt in further? When you're ready, walk the hands back, sitting up tall. This time, taking the left arm down your left leg, right arm sweeps up, and on an exhale, melt toward your left leg. Again, with that inhale, start to roll your chest and your gaze toward the ceiling. Maybe we reach out through the fingertips a little more. If we press down through that left heel, drop the right sit bone to the mat, With your next exhale, let's turn the chest down towards the left leg. Arms can be on either side of the foot. Gently begin to press down through the hands, walk them over to center again. And inhale, finding that long spine. And then exhale, maybe just holding. Maybe it is bending through the elbows. Maybe it's going flat down toward the floor. But listen to your body. Listen to what it's telling you today. Could be different than yesterday. Could be different from someone else. The practice of yoga is listening to your body. Walking the hands back. Let's sit up nice and tall again. Bring the feet in towards one another so soles of the feet touch. Our bound angle, our baddha konasana. Hands can wrap around your feet and take a moment to open the chest, long spine. And exhale, let's fold forward. So we can bring some activeness into this pose if we'd like a little bit of work. And some of that work can be letting elbows gently press on the inner shins or the inner knees. Can we keep the chest open? 
Can we perhaps squeeze into the glutes and notice the knees drop down towards the floor even more? Can we press the soles of the feet in toward one another? So lots happening at this time. Feet pressing in, squeezing into the glutes, knees dropping down, heart is open. Could be a lot to think about, so maybe we just focus on one today. Maybe we add in a second one. gently in your own time releasing out. Now if we have blocks at home, we'll grab them, both of them. Um, if we don't have blocks at home, always a rolled up blanket or a rolled up towel, um, even some pillows can be great for this pose. Uh, it's a supported fish pose. So the way that I personally like to do it is having one block on its lowest height and the next block toward the back of your mat on the medium height. And it takes a little moment to set up because ideally what you want is your shoulder blades are resting on this low block. And then just under that occipital bone, that protrusion at the back of your head, you want that flat space resting on that higher block. So if you have a bun or a ponytail, often feels better to take it out. Uh, but take your time lowering down onto forearms. Start to position that block so it's comfortable. We want the opening to be through the thoracic spine, the upper body. And then start to work at positioning the second block. And once you find yourself comfortable, hands can open up out toward the sides, just helping with that opening of the chest. If you prefer hands on the belly, they can stay there. Feet also have quite a few options Maybe feet are out wide, knees falling in toward one another. A little bit of internal rotation, countering some of the external that we've done. If you want to continue with opening in the hips, then again, that bound angle is a great pose. Soles of the feet together, knees wide. We do a lot of forward folds in our yoga, so often the psoas, our hip flexors are tight, even just from our regular day activities. So maybe letting the legs extend and just trying to feel that opening through the front is our choice today. Try to soften as much as you can. Really surrendering into the supports beneath you. Feeling where we connect to them. a large breath into your heart space and letting it all go on your exhale. Now to come out of this pose, feel free to bring a bend into the knees. Maybe one arm crosses over your body and you roll off of the blocks off to the side. Another way is to start pressing forearms down into the mat. Engage through the front of your body, tucking your chin in. A hand can always be supportive behind you. Starting to press that other elbow into the mat, belly helping, pulling yourself forward and up. A nice round as you make your way out. Beginning to lift up. 
Let's begin to clear our mats, moving props off to the side. Come back down onto your back body. Arms alongside your body, fingers reaching down towards your toes, toward the top of your mat. Take a moment to press down through your palms, press down through your feet, and start lifting your hips toward the ceiling. Imagine there's a ball between your knees. Try to avoid that flaring of the knees out wide. Keep pressing down through the feet, maybe acting as if you're trying to drag your body forward or pulling the feet back towards you. Engaging the back of your body, hands still pressing down. Another inhale, and on your exhale, releasing vertebrae by vertebrae down to the mat. We'll pull the knees in towards our chest, hands wrap around the shins or the back of your thighs. Belly pulling in, squeeze knees in tight. You can even lift your head and shoulders off of the mat. And then release them back down. Arms will open into a T position. And let your knees just melt toward the right side. If they don't want to lower down to the floor, grab hold of a block or a pillow. You can always support them. Try to support either your whole knee down to your ankle or perhaps through the shin so that everything stays fairly level. Arms again can soften and breathe into your side body. When twists, we always feel that compression or restriction in the breath. So as much as you can, breathe into that trying to break through any blockages, any stickiness. Feel free to turn your gaze over toward your left hand. Let's bring our gaze back up through the center. Control your movement. Maybe that left leg lifts first, then the right follows. A little rocking side to side, resetting the hips. And then when you're ready, starting to let the knees melt over toward the left side. Again, placing that prop underneath if you'd like support. Or letting them release down to the mat. Arms stay wide. Option to take your gaze toward your right hand. Breathing into the right side of your body. I always like to think of twists at the end of our practice. Just wringing out any last tension or stress and holding might be lingering still. Find one more big breath into the right side. On your exhale, let your right leg drop heavy. And then bring your gaze back through the center. Right leg can lift, left leg can follow. Hands can pull in, a little sway side to side. And our last pose here before coming into Shavasana. Drop your feet down into the mat. Grab hold of one of your blocks or that pillow, roll that towel. Let's lift the hips. Slide that block or towel underneath your sacrum. Letting it almost click into place. It should be fairly comfortable. Hands can rest on the belly. Hands can rest alongside your body. And feel free to stay here. Hips just slightly higher than the heart. 
Another great variation is lifting the feet up towards the ceiling. And almost finding that sweet spot where it takes very little work to hold the legs here. Often called waterfall, we can feel the rush of blood washing down the legs. And your choice if you'd like some movement through the ankles. Maybe bending the knees, widening through the legs. And again, coming back to observe and listen to your body. own time begin to bend through the knees returning feet down to the mat gently pressing into the feet to move the block off to the side and lowering back down let everything release down into your mat finding your shavasana and allowing yourself to observe your body here Reflect on your practice. Noticing how the asana, pranayama, so both the poses and the breath affect your body, affect your mind. Now in this pose, I encourage you to stay here as long as you'd like. Shavasana being, I think, one of the most important poses of the practice. Feel free to pause the video. And then when you are ready, very slowly you begin to roll onto your right side body. Take the time to settle in, curling into a fetal position. Your chin can tuck in, send a breath through the entire length of your back body. In your own time, pressing your hands into the mat, pressing your way up through to a seated position. Returning hands onto your knees or in your lap. Take that full breath in, lengthening up through the spine. I like to say finding that confident seat, and then as you exhale, soften, letting a humbleness wash over you. Dropping the right ear down toward the right shoulder. Roll your chin down towards your chest. And let your left ear melt towards your left shoulder. Roll your chin back down towards your chest. Bring your hands to heart center. Full breath in. 